Welcome back to another Essential Recap. Today we will be taking a look at a story called The Basketball Diaries. I'll be a good boy, Mom, if you let me in. <laughs> the film begins with a teenage boy lying on the bed writing something while his mother enters to wake him up. Get ready for a great story. The immediate scene shows a classroom setting in which students are sitting frightened by the sound of lashing. As the teacher is beating Jim in front of the whole class, Jim and his friends Mickey, Pedro, and Neutron hang out after school. Carefree and notorious. The opening scenes have told us that all the four friends are addicted to drugs. Jim tells Mickey that drugs can destroy all of them as they are taking way too much. The teenagers are doing something reasonable despite drugs. Their coach Swifty instructs them to get prepared for a basketball match. They'd all sign a ball for their friend Bobby, including Swifty. While alone with Jim, Swifty tells him that he is doing a good thing for Bobby. He offers him to come over and spend quality time together. Jim refuses as he has already some engagements. Why is Swifty being so nice to him? A bit creepy. During the movie, Jim is narrating their story. He says that his team belongs to the famous and unbeatable high school team Rangers in New York. They are playing the match with opponents and Jim calls himself the cheetah. Yes, we can tell from his speed. While Pedro slides away to the locker room, what is he up to? He steals money watches and other valuables from the lockers. On the other hand, the Rangers win the match. After the match, the winning boys go to have victory lunch. While eating, the boys from the opponent team appear in fury to ask about their stolen things. Jim denies stealing anything, on which they get into a fight. They beat them up and smash their heads. Are they schoolboys or town ruffians? After the fight, a call girl Diane appears to the boys and offers them a night in exchange for some money. They laugh at her and send her away. Mickey makes some rude comments about Pedro's mother, which bothers Jim. He asks him to stop his commenting every time. Wait, maybe Jim isn't such a bad guy. He has a soft spot left in his heart. He visits his friend, Bobby, at the hospital, whom Jim and the other guys were talking about. Jim and Bobby talk about the victory in the match. Here Jim takes the duty of narration again. He tells that he and Bobby have been best friends. He was the best player in the team until he got leukemia two years ago. Jim takes Bobby out in the streets and gives him a piece of his written poetry paper to read. Jim is a poet too. Nice. The next morning, Jim continues to write in his journal, while his mother advises him to get a job and be responsible. Otherwise, she will take him to the hotel where she works. Not much later, Jim is playing on a local basketball ground with Reggie. As his friends approach him, Mickey teases Jim by reading his journal aloud. The four of them depart. Mickey talks about Bobby but gets interrupted by Jim. He doesn't like him talking bad about Bobby. Of course, why would he? I like that he sides with his best friend. While having fun, Jim and Neutron suggest Pedro jump off the cliff into the river as Mickey did. But he says that he is scared and he does not want to. But when you are a part of such a crazy group, you just can't say no. He jumps off. Before jumping, Neutron tells Jim that he has a surprise for him, but it should be a secret between the two. Neutron takes Jim to spend a night with two girls, where he gets introduced to Coke. The next scene shows a church in which a coffin is lying. Jim walks to Bobby's dead body and cries. This incident is so sad for Jim, he doesn't understand why it's happening. He narrates that he kept on remembering his face in death. Later, the boys share some common stories about Jim and how he is in a better place, but the heartbroken Jim cries out, how would they know that? How about playing some basketball to ease the loss or pain? Ever tried it? Jim tells in the subsequent scenes how he got addicted to the heavier drugs, and he starts taking more and more, which made him indulge in street theft. Deep down, Lee can see that he feels remorse. The boys go to the church to confess in front of Father if they have done anything unpleasant. Jim confesses about some of his recent wicked doings and the death of Bobby broke him. Later on, Father sees Jim exchange narcotics from the window. Not good, some trouble might be coming. During basketball practice, Jim goes to the shower and takes a quick sniff. Swifty appears and oh hell no. He offers him some money in exchange for some sexual pleasure. Jim punches Swifty and tells him to get away. Swifty begs Jim not to tell anyone and that things can go back to normal like before. No Jim, don't accept it. The next scene shows Jim is soaking completely in drug dose and even hallucinates. Before their next game, they accidentally take the wrong pills instead of the uplifting ones even though Neutron advised them against it. Oh, poor Jim. As a result, everyone sees Jim and the other boys perform miserably in the match. 
Now the authorities investigate the boys for using drugs. When told they are suspended, they leave the team. Also, Jim and Mickey give their resignation from the school. Neutron decides to stay at school. Afterwards, Mickey worries about the pills taken by the police, but Jim is anxious about what to tell his mother. While at home, caught red-handed by his mother, Jim denies taking and selling drugs. His mother tells him to leave the house. Oh, Jim, what else are you going to lose now? His mother begs him to quit drugs, but he decides to leave her instead of quitting drugs. Now the three of them continue their living as homeless addicts, stealing cars. Mickey tells them that his brother will look after them. The next scene is so heart-touching when Jim's mother asks God to help him in getting rid of drugs. While the other part of the scene shows Jim taking injections. Those injections which used to frighten Jim. He continues to run his sinful business. They sneak into a bar to steal money. Jim and Mickey run away upon hearing the police sirens. While Pedro is too high, he is not able to escape. He asks Jim to help but Jim can't do anything and leaves the bar. Pedro gets caught by the police. Two down and two to go. Mickey says that he knows Jim is upset about Pedro's arrest. He can't do anything about it. A surprise comes to them when they see Neutron on a TV screen in a bar. He appears in an interview to talk about his experience in games and about his scholarship in St. Jones. Any guess about who gets upset by this news? Yes, Jim. Mickey asks Jim to not focus on him and those dreams they had. But this news disturbs Jim, unlike Mickey who still focuses on stealing money. Jim watches his mother quietly while she enters the house. Come on, Jim, show her that you care. Have some repentance. Jim goes to the apartment of the girls who were introduced to him by Neutron. But their father opens the door, and they deny knowing him. Once again, Jim is thrown out. Sticking to his drug business, Jim fights with a drug dealer and ends up passing out on the snow. Even Jim knows how bad his own condition is now. He narrates that it is difficult to write in his journal now. Here comes Reggie. He must have been sent from heaven to help Jim. He takes Jim to his home. After waking in Reggie's house, Jim insists on going out. Upon searching for his jacket, he demands Reggie give him his pills back. Instead of giving it back, he flushes it in the toilet. Good job, Reggie. You are a blessing this time. Jim asks about the reason for his help. Reggie tells Jim that he helped him once and it is time to pay back what he owes. In the following scenes, Jim begs Reggie to give him a dose. His condition becomes worse day by day while staying in Reggie's apartment without taking drugs. Well, it is good to see Reggie taking care of Jim. The following scene shows Reggie and Jim talking. Oh, nice. We can see Jim talking normally after watching him suffer so long. Jim tries to write again in his journal, but suddenly his head spins. Stop, Jim not again. Reggie deserves better. He steals money from his house and escapes. Sadly, Jim is back in the business. He begins prostituting for the sake of money. Such a lost sheep. He appears to Mickey again with money. Upon asking about the source of money, Jim lies about robbing a person on a train. Mickey tells him about a drug dealer. Soon they find out it's a fraud, and it's some bad quality drugs. Running after him, Mickey accidentally pushes the dealer from a sixth floor building. Finding him dead, Mickey blames both of them for this, but Jim tells him that he hasn't done anything. Mickey is wholly responsible for the death. Mickey leaves Jim on the spot for the fear of being caught. Such a doom for Jim. Alone and isolated Jim. He cries over what they have all done. But as we all know well, it is useless to cry over spilt milk. Mickey gets arrested by the police. On the contrary, Jim goes back home and knocks repeatedly. Such a pity to see him in this condition. I can't resist adding this dialogue. Ma, let me in. Grab your napkins. This scene is going to wet your eyes. Jim's mother opens half of the door locks, not letting him in fully, opening the door enough to see each other. But she is frightened of her son. Such a pitiful situation you got your man and Jim. What do you think the reason Jim returned home? He begs for some money from his mother. He screams and beats the door, but his mother does not let him in. She closes the door on his face. Inside the house, she hears him crying not for her, but for money. Oh, dear God. His mother calls the police to take him, not mentioning her relation to his son. Jim spends six months at Wreckers Island in prison for robbery, violence and possession of drugs. He continues to write in his journal about the time spent in jail and is finally clean. His mother did not visit him during his time in prison. After being released from prison, he meets Pedro, who recently came back from rehabilitation. He offers him a bag of drugs. Jim rejects it. In the final scene, Jim shares his story in front of the audience and gets cheers from the crowd and ready. We deserve a happy ending. 
The character of Jim has been so dominant throughout the screenplay. The problem with addictions in young teenagers is successfully covered in the direction of the movie. I would recommend watching this biographical and crime-based melodrama, as it will teach you to distinguish between godly and wicked ways. How some sins can lead you to corrupt not only yourself, but the people around you. Thanks for watching another Essential Recap. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. We appreciate the support.